Well, hello, beloved of God, you mighty prayer warriors. I'm getting ready to do this video today. By the way, two important items that are in the news. Uh, the Reclaiming Jesus movement, far left ministerial organizations and movement in America. And then uh, President Trump pulling out of the June 12 uh, summit with North Korea. And as I was getting ready to do it. The Holy Spirit just dropped on me, and the anointing was so heavy, I was wondering whether I was going to be able to do it, but uh, here I am, and it just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, give the people something in the Spirit to kind of help keep them on their magnetic north and to understand spiritual things. You know, that's what CK and I do. There are other ministries that are anointed for various things, and one of them is interpreting and dealing with a lot of the day-to-day -day things that are happening in the world, and even on the political scene and so forth. Uh, there are a lot of predictions that come forth, but you know what? What we are anointed for is navigating the heavenlies. And when I share something with you, as far as a vision, a dream, an encounter, an angelic presence, it's to help you understand in the spirit what God is doing so that it helps encourage your heart. It's not just the mind, you know, we're just all trying to get together and figure out what comes next, even if there's the Holy Spirit's breathing on that. This Reclaiming Jesus movement. Uh, I'm upset, but I'm not surprised. In fact, I feel like it's about time that they came forward publicly. Now, the Reclaiming Jesus movement, first of all, I didn't know that Jesus needed to be reclaimed. I think you could reclaim an object, an idea. Uh, you can reclaim the nation, uh, the, a political office. But how do you reclaim Jesus? You know, he hadn't been stolen. He's still there. He's still <laughs> moving. But... What they are doing is they're trying to reclaim and influence theologically in America and to change what God himself has done to shift things in the heavenlies, to shift things for our nation by this administration. You know, 81, 82 percent of the nation's evangelicals voted for President Trump. Why? Because they were tired of the form of Christianity that was mixed up with the prior administrations that allowed this country to just go socialistic, far left, uh, anti-Semitic, you name it, all the stuff that's going on in the nation. And so these ministers, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to call them you know, by their names, I'm not going to denigrate any man or woman of God. God bless them for being there. But they're deceived. You know, I went to their website, reclaimingjesus.com, to see what's happening. By the way, they do have a meeting tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time to kind of kick this off and going. And there are many, many men and women of God, intelligent people, that are endorsing it. But they all have left leanings under their prayer support their interpretation of scripture the prior administrations have really gone into globalization open borders free health care paid for abortions entitlements secularization so much has happened under their watch and so we can only interpret their presentation of Jesus, their form of Jesus, by what they have allowed and by what they have supported. So what they have done is they have made their doctrinal statements, what they believe, and then underneath it, uh, they gave their action statements, that therefore, this is what they support. And if you read the doctrinal parts of it, they're actually pretty good. It could have been written by you know, any minister, but their interpretation of it, their action statements support a far left agenda, or at least the polling of Christians 
influence out of politics, out of those makers of policies in America and just allowing things to go. I, you know, we can't do that. The Americans don't do it. So they're not evangelical. Well, I have something to share with you. They say that they're supporting the cause of Christ. And, and, I, and again, all I'm doing is just addressing what I perceive to be the interpretation and the application of their theology, not the Bible itself. I'm not going to attack any person, but their interpretation and their application of it allowed for all of these destructive things to happen in America. And so their presentation is that this administration, President Trump and all of his supporters, therefore the people that elected him, that they are white nationalists and racists, they are sexist, oppressive to the poor and to the immigrant, liars, and that their America first is a theological heresy. They grossly misinterpreted everything that the president said or what the evangelical Christians in America are doing. And remember that the evangelicals lead four times as many people to Christ than the non-evangelicals. Four times as many. Statistics bear that out. They're offended by rhetoric and presentation. Well, if they are, they would have been just as offended by Jesus and his disciples. Because they were a rough lot. Oh, not Jesus. He walked around being sweet and kind and kind of held a sheep under his arm and looked lovingly at everybody. I don't think that's exactly the way it was, particularly when he was standing in the face of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and calling them whitewashed sepulchers full of dead men's bones. Serpents, snakes, offspring of serpents. I... He was just, he was telling the truth. He came not to please people, but to bring a sword and that sword of truth and that sword of justice. I would like to encourage you just to understand that this is expected by me, that there would be an uprising of liberal Christians in America. God bless them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for their deliverance. But the problem is they are not going to reclaim Jesus, and to bring back what allowed all of this socialistic, humanistic secularization of America under their watch, under their support. No, we're not going to. We're going to stand firm. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is, oh, and, and, and I do want to mention quickly don't be afraid of that. You know, there's a few people that said, ooh, these, you know, these, are these ministers right? Have we gone just a little too far um, in our thinking and our actions? No, not at all. Not at all. They don't matter. They matter for Jesus. They matter in their ministries. But as far as the direction of the United States right now, they don't matter because of what Jesus is doing through you. Hallelujah. The second thing is Kim Jong-un. Now remember, Kim Jong-un has always been an untrustworthy, lying dictator, a murderer. And I know that people really got their hopes up when he started venturing out of North Korea and he went to China, he went to South Korea. Uh, there was a presence there through his sister and so forth at uh, the Olympics and then he made some statements that led people to believe that he was really turning. People got really excited about it. And I'm not saying that he isn't turning. But what I'm saying is they forgot who he was at heart. So we pray for his salvation. We pray for his deliverance like we do any other man. But remember what the Lord has said. All I can tell you is two visions today in line with both of these issues. In June... <clears throat> excuse me, of, no, it was April of 2016. While I was in prayer, in a prayer meeting, I had an angelic presence. An angel appeared 
right there was a vision. And in this vision, the angel said, The dogs of hell have been released against the one with the hand of the Lord on him. Pray against false witness, hatred, and murder. And release, speak truth and justice into the atmosphere. And we, referring to the angelic host, will break their spiritual teeth. And that was all during the last presidential election. While that was occurring, he showed me President Trump's face. I saw President Trump. I saw his face, and then I saw him moving, doing some things. I won't get into right now, but through that, I realized the Lord had called me to share that vision. And in that vision, I knew that it was President Trump, that God wanted to be the President of the United States, and that his hand was on him. His hand is still on him. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten involved. I hope you understand that. Uh, I do not have real strong political leanings in a public forum because I've always believed, CK and I both, that it was not our job to, uh, in an unrealistic and an unfair way, to bring influence over to people and tell them what to think or what to do or how to cast their vote. That it was my job to teach them how to think, how to decide, how to operate according to what the Spirit was speaking to them, what the Word of God said, to vote their convictions, to vote their morals, to vote the Word of God. Well, the Lord is the one who just took me at my convictions. He said, here, I'm changing you and I'm placing you in a position where I want you to have some influence here. Now, you tell the people what happened to you. And I did. I shared that vision. And that brought me into the place to where in a public forum that I have to continually uphold the fact that in that vision, the angel said, that Donald Trump had the hand of the Lord on him and to pray against false witness, hatred, and murder, spiritual influences, demonic presences. And that's all we see coming from the left. And in many forms, I bless those ministers in the Reclaiming Jesus movement, but that's what they're touting. And I don't subscribe to that. Not at all. The second vision that I had was sometime later, well, I've had many more visions than that, but the second one that I want to bring up right now was in August of 2017. And it was about Kim Jong-un. I was praying, and in the Spirit, the Lord took me up and he carried me over North Korea. And I was looking down at that peninsula, and I heard in the spirit, I heard the words, Kim Jong-un, the worms eat you. I heard it again. Okay, what's that to me? And then the Lord says, speak the words into the atmosphere over North Korea. It was, this was all in a vision, and so I did. I spoke those words, Kim Jong-un, the worms eat you. Now, I understood the scriptural references that could be applied to that, so on. And then as soon as it was over, I was back to myself. Now, why did the Lord have me do that? I believe that it was to confront the spirit. I saw a spiritual presence over North Korea, and over that dictator. And the Lord wanted me to speak a pronouncement of judgment on that spiritual head. However that or transfers out into Kim Jong-un's life. Now I've shared with you before that it was almost a uh, road to Damascus experience for the Apostle Paul, you know, when he, he was going to Oh, you can tell the Spirit of God is on me really heavy right now. When he was on his way to Damascus to arrest Christians, the Lord appeared. And it, the scripture declares that 
he came because of the persecution. It's my belief that at that moment, it was either to kill, cripple, stop the persecution that the Apostle Paul was bringing against believers by getting the Apostle Paul saved and him walking into the destiny that the Lord had set up for him or to leave him completely irrelevant is going to kill him or save him. But it was the Apostle Paul's choice. So I believe it's the same thing with Kim Jong-un. He has an option. He has a choice. He has a way out. And that's to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But even aside from that, it's to stop persecuting Christians and to change the totalitarian, oppressive system that he has. We'll see how it plays out. I can't say anything any more than that because that's all that I had in the vision. But I don't trust the man. We need to keep praying and keep pressure on in the spirit. Just like President Trump and this administration is keeping pressure on economically, politically, other ways that they apply pressure to the regime. Keep the pressure on in prayer. Do not allow things to change and to go backwards. I feel a need to pray right now. I just want you to know how much at CK and I appreciate you, wonderful Jesus people. Your faith is out there. Your prayers are out there. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now I pray with everybody under the sound of my voice. And Lord God, I pray first of all, Jesus first in America. An angel of the Lord appeared to me, Lord. You know that. I'm telling the people in another vision. And I ask the angel what I, what I can give. What kind of a prayer can I give to believers for them to pray, Christians in America? And he said, tell them to pray this. And he used the Lord's Prayer, but changed one line. And so I'm going to pray that the way the angel gave it to me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In the United States of America, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I pray that also for every nation on the earth. I pray for every believer out there for strength. Lord, release strength into every prayer warrior, every child, Lord. That they pray for America. And for your will to be done. Hallelujah. We also pray for your will to be done concerning North Korea. That you will display your power, your grace, your will on the national scene. That you would use President Trump and this administration to change the circumstances there. And Lord God, bring it to the proper conclusion as you've designed. We love you and we surrender ourselves to you now, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless every single one of you. And if you have time, just go down and look at the description underneath this video. There'll be some helps and a link to our website. Also, you can like our channel while you're there watching the YouTube videos. God bless each and every one of you.